and welcome to another edition of the Shadowland radio program. This is the second such podcast. I am your host, Dr. William Lester, and I want to thank you for joining us again. I hope you enjoyed the the first edition of the program, and we're here again, another very warm, sultry summer evening and I was thinking about topics and I, I, I kind of fluctuate between the concept of having a specific topic or just kind of you know going here there and a little bit of this and that or whatever kind of comes to mind but in any event uh, there was, or there has been something that has been uh, running through my brain for the last week or so, and it's something that I've thought about before, and I wanted to share it with you. And it's something that is, I feel, a product of the internet age. And I don't really think it there's a term for it and so I'll try my best to kind of articulate this as I go and keep in mind uh, for the most part I am trying to make this applicable to uh, the topics that we talk about most of the time paranormal unexplained phenomena etc but the internet seems to have played a significant role in the creation and subsequent evolution of a lot of self-styled experts and of course in a number of arenas but in this instance I'm thinking particularly or specifically about image analysts or photographic experts or whatever you call the kind of people who can scientifically or who who are qualified who are qualified to analyze an image be it a still photo or a piece of video footage now of course I know that I know that we have crossed the Rubicon uh, we've crossed the border which separates the world of analog and the world of digital okay and there are images and video that are on film physical film and the same is also true uh, on a digital format so there are a number of things in play here what I've noticed of course you go on the internet there are a number of photos that purport to capture paranormal activity unexplained phenomena UFO activity unknown manifestations of a number of varieties and a lot of these are posted on websites blogs a lot of the video footage is on YouTube Photographs and videos are posted on Facebook, all of the social media, certainly. Sometimes these images and this footage will appear on various news sites. And almost inevitably, these sites will 
have a section for viewers to comment. And of course, when you read the comment section of any site, you will see some of the best and some of the worst of what mankind has to offer. in terms of being able to articulate or to express cogent thought. But one thing I've noticed is how so very many more image experts we seem to have out there. We seem to have so many people who are skilled and trained and educated and adept at properly analyzing photographs and video footage and then offering us their expert opinion analysis. And I find it I find it very, very interesting. I find it very, very interesting. Now, of course, if you have detected a a ringing tone of sarcasm in some of my statements, you are you are quite correct. Uh, because almost inevitably the type of people who are very willing uh, and enthusiastic about offering their analysis are almost inevitably it's in the negative. One of the popular terms that I notice on these comment sections, on these comment pages, is the following, quote, I'm calling it a fake, or I'm calling fake. Almost as if it's a judge rendering a decision in a court case. As if this individual's proclamation has the power of edict. Now, if you follow these types of websites, if you look at these types of things the way I do, I know that you've seen this as well. And I find it very interesting. Again, I think this is a product of the Internet age. And I think you have a couple of things going on here. Of course, we live in a time where people believe that hopping from website to website, including Wikipedia, constitutes research. And then another thing that's going on is that there's an aspect of, of trolling, which I guess is one of these new internet terms. There's an aspect of trolling in which an individual thrives on manifesting the negative. I've seen it on various social media applications. Now, these people aren't qualified really in any way to do any image analysis. They have their opinions, yes. But that's, you know the old saying, opinions are like noses and like other parts of the anatomy.
And so you can have images or videos of, for example, UFO. And you'll have people who will say, for example, this is clearly a fake. And then there's no supporting information as to why it's a fake. It's just, to them, clearly a fake. You'll have other people, you have other people who will tell you that it's a fake because the shadows aren't right and the lighting isn't right. Okay. And above and beyond that, why else? You know, give me some numbers. Give me some science. What is this phenomena supposed to look like? What is a ghost supposed to look like? How is it supposed to move? How is the flight pattern, how is the trajectory of a UFO supposed to look? A lot of this goes back decades with the very silly people who talked about the moon landing being a hoax. And it really wasn't based on anything other than some people's fervent desire to be a contrarian, some people's inability to really process uh, the, the level of scientific progress uh, that we had made. And of course the moon landing was an extraordinary achievement because it was only 66 years removed from the Wright brothers. And then of course there are some people who have this insatiable, insatiable appetite for anything that can be uh, twisted in, in a conspiratorial way. This is something that I encounter frequently on Facebook. If you're interested in conspiracies, I can tell you, don't even bother Googling conspiracies. Just go to Facebook. And they would have you believe, or some people would have you believe that you know we're under the control of Ming the Merciless, Darth Vader, and every other villainous character you can think of. And you can't drink the water, you can't eat the food, you can't breathe the air, you can't uh, it's it's insane. Stanton Friedman, who is a former nuclear physicist and a, and a uh, noted UFO researcher, talks about those people that, well, the term he uses is uh, the noisy negativists. And he's right. There are people out there just kind of randomly out there and they exist just to say no. They exist just to say no.
So that was one of the things that had been on my mind lately. You know, the, the, the internet spawned image expert, the optical expert, the image analyst. There was a time when you would defer to a person who was educated and trained in a certain field. Chemistry is not my field, for example, so I'm not going to argue or debate with a chemist about chemistry. That is not intelligent. I'm not an engineer. So I'm not going to engage an engineer and try to challenge him on an engineering issue. That's not intelligent. I may have questions, inquiries, but we live in an age now where people have access to a certain amount of information and so some people succumb to the illusion that they are experts in certain fields. And they're arguing with people who are trained in school and educated and experienced in these fields. It's very similar to what's going on with this, this whole thing about climate change. You have people who are not meteorologists, not climatologists, not geologists, but they have all of these grandiose ideas and positions and theories about climate change. Not because they really know anything about it, but because they are they are defending or representing a particular, you know, political position. And while I don't want to sit here and do a, a whole white paper on climate change, I'll simply say this. To be honest with you, the only people who are debating climate change uh, are, are, is the media. It's the media. The experts are not really debating. They're talking, but they're not debating. 85, 90% of the climatologists, of the meteorologists are, are of, on a general consensus. But the debate, the so-called climate change debate, is only really happening in the media. Which to me, translates out to a non-issue. So, that's something that you maybe should keep your eye on and kind of be aware of what's, of what's, what's going on and, and uh, what's not going on. So, let me take a little time now. Let me take a little time now and talk about what's going on with the Institute. Talk about what's going on with the Institute. The American Institute of Metaphysics. I get lazy and I start using shorthand and I'll just say the Institute. But those of you who have been around for a while, you, you know what I mean. Okay. So, if you're listening to this program um, I want you to visit the Institute's Facebook page because we post a lot of interesting articles, videos, uh, photos, uh, commentary. And just go to Facebook and just type in Institute of Metaphysics and it'll take you right there. And there's all kinds of things. Lately, lately, I have to tell you, um, We've been experimenting 
with themed postings. Okay. Uh, and what I mean is every day our postings would be based around a different theme. And I was kind of nervous slash hesitant about that at first. But it's actually worked out very well. For example, today is Thursday, so we had Thriller Thursday. And Thriller Thursday is cool because that, you know, that can encompass all kinds of things. Very broad, general, you know. Now, on Friday, I have two categories. Some Fridays are going to be Netherworld Friday, which is kind of a demonology type thing. And then we also have something called Far Out Friday, which again is a kind of broad, all-encompassing category. We have Werewolf Wednesday, which has been a lot of fun. We have Out of This World Saturday, which is generally kind of, you know, alien UFO related. Last Saturday, we did something called Saturday Night Demonology, which was just, there wasn't going to be a theme, and then toward the afternoon, I kind of got the idea, well, you know, let's 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 do one, Saturday night, whatever, Saturday night demonology. So we just started that. We have Scholars Sunday, in which we get, you know, very bookish, very academic, very research-oriented. We have Sunday Spirits, which, of course, you know, all ghosts and hauntings and things like that things going bump in the night and people have responded very well very positively we do time travel Tuesday again a self-explanatory title and so I'm thinking that we will continue on with that you know into the summer okay so I do encourage you oh and I, I'm sorry I forgot about Monster Monday who doesn't like monsters right but like I said we'll, we'll, we'll try to keep this going through the summer Uh, people have responded very nicely, very positively, and um, I certainly appreciate the support. Certainly appreciate the support. Absolutely want to uh, express a lot of appreciation to the latest crop of incoming students. We have some new incoming doctoral candidates, and. Um, they're very excited as we are, and uh, they're working hard, uh, and uh, they're pursuing their doctoral degree. And uh, it's a big commitment. That's a big commitment when you think about it. Because these people have lives. In many instances, they have jobs, they have families, they have other obligations and responsibilities, and they are joining us joining the Institute to pursue an advanced degree and it's a it's a commitment of time it's a commitment of, of, of finances and so I'm I'm very grateful that those individuals have chosen uh, the Institute uh, to pursue those goals So what else? What else? I'll tell you something. Um, 
I've been watching. I, I've got this really, um, really crazy, maybe in the minds of some people, this really crazy affinity for these vintage retro uh, documentaries. Most of these are from the late 60s into the early 70s. Uh, these UFO documentaries, these various paranormal. Uh, and if you're, if you're of a certain age, if you're, I don't know, if you're uh, 35 or over, you, of course, remember In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy. That's kind of an example. But there were a lot of very fun, entertaining documentaries in the early to mid-70s. Now, by today's standards, they don't have the technical gloss and slick production value that some of the people, you know, say if you're 30 and under, you may not be used to. If you're 30 and under, you're used to things looking slick and digital and pretty and flawless and seamless. But these documentaries that I'm talking about have a, have a really gritty, organic, almost newsreel type quality. Again, now, if you're under 30, you might not even know what I mean by newsreel. Again, now, by today's standards, some of it is a little hokey. And to be sure, some of the concepts have been, have been shown to be not as rock solid as, as people thought 40 years ago. But it's okay because it's still it's it's still a great deal of fun. Now, there are still things in these programs to be you can still learn things to be sure, especially if you're coming into the field. If you were a novice, I would start you off on these on the ones that I'm talking about. And I've been kind of looking at these. I've got a lot of them on DVD. And I've been looking at these over the last couple of days. Now, years ago, years ago, they were being shown on television. Usually at night. It, it was a lot of fun. They'd usually be shown late at night. Like after, you know, after 11. Of course, here in Atlanta, we had the Superstation. And those of you who are listening who were in, in Atlanta or in the Southeast, you know what I mean when I say the Superstation, Channel 17. And there was one called the Overlords of the UFO. Very entertaining, very interesting, a lot of fun. Had a lot of psychedelic special effects. There was one called UFOs Are Here. And then uh, Chariots of the Gods, which was a documentary that was made based on the Eric Von Donneken book. Fantastic documentary. And of course, uh, the legend of Boggy Creek, one of the all timers, talking about the Falk monster in Falk, Arkansas. Now, 
And then the one that I consider to be the granddaddy of them all, the mysterious monsters hosted by uh, the late, great Peter Graves. And this was one that I actually saw in the movie theaters. And I'll tell you something about that one. We are now just about 40 years on. And that is, in my estimation, still the best documentary on Sasquatch, Bigfoot, the Abominable Snowman. How about that? And there are many others out there. And if you're so inclined, you can track these down. Most of them are on DVD now. There's one more that I posted up on Facebook recently on the Institute's Facebook page, The Journey Beyond Earth. And it talks not just about UFOs, but a variety of other unexplained phenomena. And you can definitely check that one out. And it's worth watching. It's worth, it is worth watching. So, just a few news and notes from our second podcast of the Shadowland Radio Show. I'm your host, Dr. William Lester, president of the American Institute of Metaphysics. If you'd like to check out the Institute, you can visit online at www.instituteofmetaphysics.com. Like I said, you can also check out the Institute's Facebook page, very active and engaging. And as always, I appreciate you listening. And I will have, uh, in the last, in the first podcast we did, the last podcast we did, I told you that I was <clears throat> I was not really sure what I was going to do in terms of making these available, but what we're going to do henceforth is we're going to put them on YouTube and on the Institute Facebook page. So there shouldn't be a situation where you can't find it. So whatever your preference is, you should be able to listen. So that's going to do it for this installment. And I will see you on the flip side.